Welcome back to Shop Life. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to remove and replace most of your cooling system components, uh, your belts, your pulleys, your tensioners, all of that expansion tank, everything. So pretty much what, if you were going to ecstuning.com, they have a basic refresh kit. They have a couple of stages like level one, level two, level three. Obviously this is about a level two because we're not replacing the radiator and we're not replacing any of the heater hoses or the plastic cooling hoses underneath the intake manifold. But we are gonna be taking care of the upper radiator hose, lower radiator hose, expansion tank, all the belts, all the pulleys, all the tensioners, and water pump and thermostat. So let me go and show you guys what tools we're gonna need first, and then we'll go ahead and get into the parts and start taking things apart. All right, so in terms of tools, you want a couple of socket sets. This is a quarter inch socket set, uh, then a couple of extensions, a socket wrench for a 3 8 3 8 socket set, a hex set, you want preferably metric, uh, a torque set, uh, you would want from about a T20 up until a T50, a breaker bar, a pry bar, your fan clutch nut removing tool if you have a automatic. For manual, you can just get away with a Torx set, a mallet, and a pair of wire cutters or whatever that help to remove push pins. You will also need various sets of uh, flathead and Phillips screwdrivers. That will come very handy. And then in terms of parts, We've got a thermostat, we've got an AC belt tensioner, we've got a water pump, water pump pulley, uh, the main drive belt tensioner, drive belt pulley, upper and lower radiator hose, expansion tank, uh, other parts that are not shown here are a coolant level sensor, uh, both belts, the alternator pulley as well, and the coolant level sensor. Let's go and get started. So the car that we're working on today is a 2005 325 CI with the M56 engine. This process is pretty much the same for M54, M56, uh, even E39s, uh, E36s, it's almost all the same. So we have the airbox here. This car is missing the fan shroud, uh, but I do have a video on uh, just water pump removal and other just various cooling system components. Nothing together, just other like separate single component DIYs, which will show you how to remove that fan. If you have automatic, this is a good time to go ahead and convert to a manual electric fan. Uh, the electric fans, they just drop in instead of the clutch fan and you just bolt it in. It's only held in with one bolt and one push pin. So in the future, if you ever have to do anything, just remove one bolt and it pops right up. Then you won't need a fan clutch holding tool or none of that crap. Let's go and get started. We're gonna go in and remove this air cowl and air box first. As you can see, all this stuff is already pretty loose. This car has went through a uh, automatic to manual conversion and the people that did it, they did a lot of sketchy stuff, forgot to put a lot of stuff back. So we will see more of the carnage in a little bit. All right, so to remove the air cowl, ideally you would have three push pins here. Uh, just use a little wire cutter or whatever, lift up the tab that's in the middle, then do it for all three and then the push pins will just pop off. Then what you wanna do is get a flathead. There's one tab right here that goes into the air box. Push that tab. Then you have two on the other side. These two right here. So you wanna just push it in just like that so that you can remove the whole thing. Now we're gonna remove the air box. Ideally, you would have two 10 millimeter bolts, which are also missing. And then you have your mass airflow sensor. The clip is also busted on there. There's two ways to remove this air box. You can remove it with the mass airflow or without. We're just gonna do it with it. So just go ahead and disconnect the mass airflow. Get on your hose clamp right here. You can use a six millimeter socket or just a flathead. Loosen it until you can move the hose clamp around. Then you wanna go ahead and just try to push the intake boot off. Uh, I've got a lot of comments about why this, this way is a lot easier for a lot of people. Main reason I usually don't do it this way is because the intake boot, it puts more stress on that. And if you're not gonna be replacing the intake boots, uh, they might tear, then you will have to replace them and you might get stranded or you might just have a big vacuum leak. So that's why I usually, there's two little clips right here, two little silver clips. You just push the clip off and then you push the whole, in, the mass airflow uh, off of the air box. So you just push that intake boot off, then you have this wiring harness. On most E46s, this part's gonna be broken, but if it's not, you just gotta get this wiring harness, it's like a little rubber uh, rubber holder. You get it off of the bracket, it just pulls straight up and off. 
And then in the front, what you're gonna have is this little, the front you're gonna have this little air duct. So what you wanna do is when you're pulling it out, you wanna pull the back out first and then pull it straight up and out. That way this doesn't get caught on anything. So here's the air box. Here are the two little metal clips I was talking about that you can just pull off and pull the mass airflow off. All right, so now, as you can see, this fan blade is busted off. We're missing the shroud. So if you have automatic, you're gonna have a fan shroud with a T25 bolt that's gonna be holding it in right here. You wanna take that bolt completely out. And then on this side, you're gonna have a push pin that you wanna remove the little center pin and then pull that whole push clip off. That will make your fan shroud a little loose so you can move it around. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your fan clutch removal tool and go ahead and get it onto the actual fan clutch. There's a nut that's on it. And then you can use the holder that they give you or you can use a pry bar, which I'm about to show you, and remove it like that. So what you can do is get your pry bar, get it underneath the bolt and on top of that fan clutch nut, get your fan clutch nut removal tool and then loosen it like that. So what you wanna do is you wanna put pressure on the pry bar, pushing it down that way. And this is reverse threaded, so you're gonna pretty much turn it right to loosen it. So then you wanna push pressure down this way to remove it. What I would also recommend is make sure you have a new water pump pulley, because sometimes these do tend to break, especially if the fan clutch is seized on there and you have to remove the whole thing as a unit, then you will need a new fan clutch with blade and a new pulley. Once you have it loosened, you can just spin it off. Now that we have the fan clutch out, go ahead and open your expansion tank to release the pressure. Now you wanna get a drain pan so we can go ahead and drain most of the coolant out. So if you have all of your plastic covers down here, go ahead and remove the plastic covers. They're gonna be held in with Phillips screws. You just turn them about a uh, half of a turn and that'll release that clip. So that way you can just pull the whole plastic shield out. Then you should, this is on the driver's side of the engine bay. This is the radiator right here and here's the drain plug. Uh, it's a blue plug. We're gonna go ahead and remove that with the big Phillips head. All right, so to make it so that it's not splashing out of that drain plug, what you can do is go ahead and open the bleeder valve. This will let air into the entire system and push most of the coolant out. Now just let the coolant drain out all the way. All right, so while the coolant's draining, we're gonna go ahead and remove the belts. Uh, first, you wanna go ahead and remove this dust cover off of the AC tensioner pulley. Use a flathead. All you wanna do is just pry that dust cap, the cover off with the flathead. Now you're gonna use a Torx 50 socket with a breaker bar. To release the tension, you're gonna turn it clockwise. Pull the belt off. And then you can go ahead and put the tension back. There's your AC belt removed. Now we're gonna go to remove the actual drive belt. For that, depending on the tensioner you have, you might have a little divot on the tensioner itself that you can put a 16 millimeter socket on and it'll remove that whole tensioner. Or you might have this hydraulic one with a hex eight socket for this pulley. You're gonna have to use the pulley to release the tension. So go ahead and get a hex eight or whatever type of tensioner you have. Turn clockwise to release the tension. Pull the belt off. Now that both belts are off, we can go ahead and continue removing the cooling system components. We'll start off by removing this upper radiator hose. What you wanna do is get a flathead, get on this metal clip, pry that clip off. You don't have to pull it off all the way. This one just popped off, otherwise it'll just slide up and rest in this little section right here. Once you have that, go ahead and remove that hose. Just like that. Now let's remove the upper radiator hose from the expansion tank and radiator. Same concept here with the metal clips. Use a flathead, lift the clip up. Lift the clip up from the expansion tank as well as the radiator. Now go ahead and remove it. You could use like a flathead or something to gently pry on it. Now we can go ahead and remove this hose off of the expansion tank. 
Same concept, flathead, get the pin up. Just like so. Make sure you have a drain pan underneath. And this you can use a pry bar or anything to go ahead and pry this off. Whenever you're using a pry bar or anything like that, you want to be very gentle so you don't crack or mess up any other hoses. All right, so now that we've got that hose off of the expansion tank, go ahead and release this clip. Just pull it to the side, just like that. And then there's a level sensor underneath the expansion tank, which you could just feel for right next to this clip, this right here. Go ahead and push that clip in, or the, go ahead and push the clip in and release that sensor. There's a clip right here, see that? Just push it in, then pull it straight off. It sits just like this, so it's backwards. Push the clip and push it off. Now what you're gonna do is we're gonna lift the expansion tank straight up. If you have a automatic transmission car, you will have a automatic transmission thermostat, which you will also have to replace. Uh, this one has been swapped to a manual, so even if it's still there, we're not gonna put it back. And then you just pull it straight up. So if you're having trouble removing that expansion tank like I am, what you're gonna do is you're gonna remove that clip all the way. Just slide it off of the grooves. Once you have the clip removed, get like a silicone spray like this, and go ahead and spray into the ridges where the clip was, and that will travel down onto the little O-rings on the expansion tank. All right, so what you can do is if you're still having trouble, get you a helper, get a long extension like this, slide the extension into this hole that the hose came out of, have your helper pull this up right here while you put your two hands right here and right here and pull the expansion tank straight up. That'll give you a little bit more leverage and it'll pull right off. And there we have it. Here's the rest of the automatic transmission thermostat. You can use a needle nose plier to go ahead and pull it out. There we go. Now that we have all that out, let's go ahead and remove the lower radiator hose. Same concept here, pull the clip out. Now go on the radiator. We're gonna go ahead and remove the connector for the, uh, the aux fan switch. Push the clip in just like so, and pull it straight out. I'm gonna remove all these wires out of the way. Pull this clip up on the radiator hose. Now what you can do is if this one's giving you trouble, which it more than likely will, Use that same silicone spray and spray it into the little grooves right here. And when you spray into the grooves, it'll travel to that O-ring and will make it easier to pull out. Let it set in for a little bit. There's the little radiator hose. All right, now we're gonna go in and remove this thermostat first. Uh, Go ahead and disconnect the connector first. Now that we have the connector removed, it's held in with three 10 millimeter bolts, one on the top, two on the bottom, which I'll show you once I remove it, and a 13 millimeter bolt right here that goes onto this engine uh, holder. So we'll start off by removing that 13. Now we can go ahead and remove all the 10s. Once you have all the bolts removed, you're gonna go ahead and turn just like that to the right clockwise. Once you turn it, this little tab will come out from in between this little engine uh, hook. And now let me show you all three bolts. These three are the 10s and that's the 13. Now that we have that removed, let's go and remove this water pump. What you wanna do first is remove these four 10 millimeter bolts to remove the pulley. So you can remove these with the belt on as well, but they shouldn't be on there that tight to begin with. Once 
Once you have all four bolts removed, go to remove the pulley. You might have to pry on it just a little bit. Just like so. Once you have the pulley off, go ahead and remove the four nuts holding the water pump in. Once you have all four nuts out, go ahead and try pulling on it. If it doesn't pop out, what you can do is there's two threaded uh, hollow holes. They're threaded. Uh, what it'll do is you put in the uh, thermostat 10 millimeter bolts, thread them in, and while you thread both of them in, it'll push against this holder and it'll push that water pump out which is what we're gonna have to do. Whoa. And then it will just release. So if your surfaces where the water pump went in and the thermostat went in are dirty, Go ahead and clean them up with uh, just a normal towel that doesn't leave any lint behind. Clean them up. Make sure you remove those two threaded bolts that we put in that water pump because we're going to need those for the thermostat. We're going to go ahead and put the water pump in first. All right, so we're going to put the new water pump in first. Uh, make sure you just lubricate the o-ring with just water or coolant. Push it in. Put the four nuts on. Main reason we're doing this right now instead of changing the rest of the pulleys is just so no more dirt gets into those uh, cooling cavities so we don't want any dirt in there so we're just gonna go ahead and put the water pump and thermostat back in now that everything's tight let's go ahead and put the thermostat back on you can also put a little bit of coolant or water on here what you want to do is you want to put it in at an angle first that way you can slide that tab into this engine hook start out with the 13 and just thread it in with our hand a little bit Once all the bolts are tightened, go ahead and put the connector back on. Now that the connector's back on, let's go ahead and change the pulleys out. We'll start out with the accessory belt pulley. Damn, that thing is bad. Pop off the dust cap. That's held in with a 16 millimeter bolt. Now that we have that pulley off, we can go ahead and remove this tensioner. We'll start out by removing the pulley, get a hex 8. Make sure you don't lose these little dust shields. Now that we have that off, we can go ahead and remove the tensioner, which is held in with three 13 millimeter bolts, one long one on the top, short one for the tensioner, and another one right here. Here's the bolt that goes at the bottom right. The bottom left is a little bit smaller. Go ahead and put the new one on. We'll start out with the bottom right. So now we're going to use the hex 8 socket with the hex 8 bolt. Make sure you put the dust shield on the, on the back. Now that that's out, we're going to go ahead and do the AC belt tensioner next. Go ahead and get a T50 so you can remove the bolt for the pulley. Use a T50 and go ahead and loosen it. Alright, so now we're going to use a 16 millimeter socket to pull off the 16 millimeter bolt that's holding this tensioner in place. Now we're going to go ahead and put this new tensioner back in. Go ahead and tighten it down. Now you will have a little a pin that's holding that tension in. In order to remove it, you're going to have to just ten release the tension on the tensioner a little bit so you can pull that pin out. We'll do that when we're putting the belt back on. 
All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put this alternator belt pulley back on. This is a new one. As you can see, there's a little, there's a little ridge right there. You have to line that up with the ridge right on the actual bracket itself, on the alternator itself. So just like that, and you'll feel it click right in. Use a 16 millimeter socket, go ahead and tighten it down. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put on this water pump pulley. Go ahead and get your bolts, make sure it's lined up properly. You can go ahead and tighten all four of these bolts with a 10 millimeter socket. All right, once you have the four bolts tightened, we're gonna go ahead and put the belt back on. We're gonna need a hex socket number eight, so you can go ahead and release the tension to put the belt on properly. I have a video on how to route it if you need to just refer to it really quickly. That shows us a lot more in depth. Just turn it clockwise to release the tension. Oh, ow, ow. Let go? Yeah. Go ahead and make sure the belt is on all the ridges properly. Go ahead and put the tension back. Double check that the belt's on all of the ridges. Once that's done, go ahead and put the dust cap back on this alternator pulley. Now we're gonna put the AC belt on. All right, so since we have the little tensioner pin still in here, I was able to route the whole belt without Re uh, releasing the tension, but now we're gonna go ahead and try to get that pin out so that the tension will go back to how it's supposed to be. All right, here's the pin that I pulled out. Make sure the belt's on all the ridges properly. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this lower radiator hose in first. Make sure that your temperature switch is pushed in all the way. If you want to, you can also go ahead and pull those metal clips up. You don't have to necessarily, but it does help. Once it clips in, put that metal clip back in. Go ahead and hook up the lower radiator hose to the thermostat as well. Just like so. Close it up. Now we can go ahead and put the expansion tank back on, and then we'll do the upper radiator hose. Make sure you transfer your coolant level sensor or put a new one on if your old one breaks. Uh, and then what you're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hook up the sensor first, and then we'll go ahead and push this expansion tank on. There's a tab that's right here that has to sit in this groove on the, uh, the expansion tank mounting plate. And just make sure all the O-rings and everything in there are secure, especially if you're gonna be reusing an old one, which I do not recommend. So go ahead and hook up that sensor. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna push it straight down. Go ahead and put that clip back in. And if you have automatic, make sure you do not forget to put your automatic transmission thermostat back in. And that one also just slides in. There's one groove on the top where it sits on the plate. You'll see that only there's only one groove, so just make sure that groove lines up. Once you have it settled in, try to pull on it and see if it comes up. Nope, we're nice and secure. Go ahead and hook up the hose on the bottom. Go ahead and put that clip back down. Try pulling on it, make sure it's not coming out. We're good. Now we're gonna go ahead and hook up this upper radiator hose. Hook up the lower uh, upper radiator hose to the thermostat first. Just like that, push the clip in. Now we're gonna hook it up to the expansion tank and the radiator. Once it's pushed into the radiator, go ahead and put that clip down. Now make sure the expansion tank sits in properly. Put that clip down. Make sure everything's hooked up. Try to pry on it, make sure it doesn't come out. We're good, all this is good. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and release this bleeder uh, screw. Just take the bleeder screw all the way off. After that, make sure your auxiliary fan switch is plugged in. Go ahead and hook up the auxiliary fan switch. Once that's done, now we're gonna start filling up the cooling system. So make sure your bleeder screw's all the way out. We're gonna start out with just straight distilled water. That way if there are any leaks, we'll be able to tell right away and we can go ahead and address those before we start using the excoolant. You're gonna keep 
filling up the cooling system until you start seeing fluid come out of the bleeder valve and you want to make sure there's no bubbles coming out so you want to keep pouring until there's no bubbles that means that there won't be any air in the system and then when you turn the car on you won't have to bleed it as much all right once you've put all the water in go ahead and check around all the hoses for any leaks if you're good then go ahead and start putting the coolant in and then you should start seeing bubbles start popping out you want to put an equal amount of water and equal amount of coolant so if you put a whole jug of water which is a gallon you want to put a whole jug of coolant even if it's still coming out of the bleeder valve just keep on pouring it'll even it out and then what you, what you want to do after that is go ahead and close the bleeder valve up close the uh, the cap release the bleeder valve about one and a half turns turn the heater on to full blast or you could do low as long as it's on the highest temperature turn the heater on and then just keep the car revved up at around 2000 rpm until you start feeling heat coming out then you come back out, close the bleeder valve, take it for a drive. Once you're done driving, let the car cool down all the way, double check the level. If there's too much coolant in there, go ahead and use like a turkey baster and pull out the excess coolant. If there's not enough, go ahead and add. And make sure you don't forget to wait for the car to cool down after you've came back from the drive before you check it. So that's the tips. Let's go ahead and finish putting everything else back together. I've got a lot more other work to do on this car, so I'm not gonna be really fully bleeding it yet but we'll put all this other stuff back together. All right, so we're gonna turn it left to tighten it because it is reverse threaded. All right, so once you have your fan back on, make sure your shroud is bolted in properly with the T25 bolt right here and the push pin that goes right here. Go ahead and put your air box back in. So you're gonna put it in at an angle. Watch the intake boots. You can use a six millimeter socket or a flathead screwdriver. Go ahead and hook up the mass airflow sensor. Then go ahead and put the two 10 millimeter bolts for the air box, which are missing, but I will add later for this car. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos.